Hello everyone, the product that we are going to try out today is pretty awesome. This is an external additional display for your Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. It comes in a really nice packaging. I mean, kudos to this manufacturer for putting it in such a nice packaging. There's this nice Model 3 logo here. And when you open it, you have the display and it kind of looks like a Mickey ears <laughs> when you just look at it. Um, but what this does is it is going to allow you to have a speedometer right in front of you here while you are driving and then other car information like charge information um, and, and much more. And then they send you this uh, cable to connect this to the autopilot computer down there. I'm gonna install this today and I'm gonna drive around with this display for the next couple of days and before posting this video I will gather all the information about what I feel about this display what are my likes what are my dislikes if it vibrates um, if it is hard to drive with it if it is really a useful gadget so so I'm gonna note all of that information while I'm driving the true driving experience with this and when I post this video I'm gonna include all of those feedbacks with the video. First step on the installation process is to remove the side dash panels. Just take a pry tool and gently start prying and there are two tabs that come right out. Just be gentle with prying and take your time. Next we can just pull the dash out and all you have to do is just gently prop it open and then it comes right out. Next, loosen the clips from the top of the steering wheel and just take a pry tool, same deal. Just loosen those clips and then they come out and then reach underneath that leather part and then apply some force to get prop open the steering wheel cover. You're gonna have to be patient with this. It takes some time and don't, don't apply excessive force. Just be gentle with it. Take a pry tool and keep trying and it will come out. Next, we're gonna move on to the passenger side footwell underneath the glove box, and we're going to remove those four clips. Just use a pry tool or a flathead screwdriver to remove those clips. Next, remove the light and the speaker connector by just pulling them out and we are going to need to remove that gray plug. That's the second gray plug on the top. And to remove this computer connection, you wanna push on that little tab and then pull it out and it, it just comes out, but it's not as easy as it looks. I had to recline my seat and then literally be upside down to take the cable out. Next, connect the female plug of the display unit with the male plug of Tesla's computer that we took out and then Take that male plug of the display unit and plug it into the computer of the same plug that we took out. And this is what it should look like when it is plugged in. Next, we're gonna remove that side door panel because we're gonna route the cable through there. Now route the cable as shown in the video. All right, now we are ready to put the display First, what we need to do is detach this part because as you can see, this is going to replace this top part. So we're gonna wanna detach it from this bottom part here. And to do that, all you gotta do is push this clips, but before you do that, there's this clip right here. And you just have to push it and take this out. So pull it and take this out. So pull it and it unclips and then this kind of just comes out. If it doesn't, just push it a little bit. So we're gonna save this if we decide to remove the display later. And what we're gonna do is the same thing, how it came out. We are just going to put this clips, align this clips. They are exactly how it was on the Tesla. Connect the cable and start putting the steering wheel panel back together. Mm -hmm. 
So you might have to put in some force to clip this. I was a little scared, but eventually I got it. It just requires a little bit more force here for this to settle in place. And then now we're just going to clip this guys out here. Fix the cable using some electrical tape and put the dash panel on. You just have to slide it and push it a little bit. Make sure it is tight and secure. And then just start putting the side panels on both sides. Now we are going to put this panel that we took out from under the passenger footwell. The interface is pretty simple. Uh, to change this view, all you have to do is swipe this up. So when you swipe up, it changes to you know day, night. Uh, it does kilometer per hour instead of miles per hour and it goes between different display you see the circle got kind of a big and small here so we can keep changing it and one of the interface looks like this the miles per hour and it's white and then your battery is you know where your battery is sitting right here and if we go back to this one now one thing is to change the settings you just have to press this right scroll wheel towards the right so right and then you saw that the setting menu popped up and to highlight something you can you can go up and down to that setting and so for example right here when i have theme it says simple and classic so right here right it highlights it makes it blue then I can scroll up or down to toggle between those two. So that one's classic. And if I do simple, just go to simple and I can press again right here for it to select that. And you saw that the circle become a little bit smaller. I don't really know what the difference is, but it changes. So I'm going to select that back to classic. And then I get that. Now there's mode is day, night, and you can do auto. I personally like the night mode. Time format, you can change that. So here is the wheels. If I want to change the wheel type, all I have to do is press this right and it highlights it. Now I can go between different wheels. So change that to the one at the very end or one in the middle. So if I do that, and hit that same arrow again it changed the wheel right here in the screen mine is the 18 inch arrow wheel so i am gonna go back to this one and then again right and it selects that one and it changed the arrow wheel we can change the language between english and chinese that's what i'm assuming and then there's time zone um, you have to manually select this for whatever time zone you are in uh, car color auto um, I recommend just leaving that in auto because then it will read whatever is in your computer and then show your car color in my case my car is red it showed red and then finally at this setting there is just the version number and a place for you to scroll back and there you are Now I've had some time to test this product. I wanted to provide my honest opinion about what I think about this product. So let's just start with things I really like about this and we'll move on to things I don't like about this product. First, I really like the HD graphics and display. This looks and feels like it was designed by Tesla and built by Tesla. The, the, the display just fits right into the car and it fits very seamless as if you know it came with the car already i have seen similar products from other companies where it is 720p graphics and it just doesn't feel like it belongs in a beautiful tesla like this uh, versus this one it just 
I don't know, I really, really, really like the clarity of the graphics and how it looks and feels. One example of this SD graphics and clarity is when autopilot alert comes on to put your hand in the steering wheel. The, the display goes from different phases. First, it starts with the gray hands and then it moves on. And finally, when autopilot times you out for not putting your hands and not obeying autopilot rules that the car is putting you on, the red hand comes on right on the steering wheel. So it is really, really easy to see right in front of your eyes. And I actually really like that. The big plus for me about this display is being able to see the the miles as well as the percentage of my battery. It is very annoying right now in Tesla where it makes you choose either the expected range or the percentage of the battery. I wish we could see both of those at the same time in one display. And this product actually shows you both. It shows you the percentages on the left and then the estimated range on the right, which is really awesome. I also honestly enjoyed seeing the speedometer right in front of my eyes and having some of those car information right in front of my eyes. In the last two years, I have forgotten about having an instrument cluster and you know, I was kind of surprised that I actually used it a lot more than I thought I was going to use it. Since the last holiday update, there has been some changes in the UI in Tesla where the gear selection going from you know park reverse drive has been shrunk and it is on the very left hand side and it's very small. So for folks who might have vision problems, this might be a problem that they might not be able to see it very clearly. So having this display where the gear selection is right in front of your eyes and they are big and you know which gear you are in, that was really nice. I think some people would really, really appreciate having that information right in big letters right in front of them. It is also really cool that you have the speed limit sign right in big right in front of your eyes as well as the turn signals. Now, you know that when you make a left turn, it shows you right there in the left and then right turn, it shows right, right in front of your eyes in big. I also like that there are two USB-C ports that are accessible to you and they are powered. We tested it and it was powered. So it is in a very convenient location for phone holders and various other accessories. I absolutely like that. Finally, I find some comfort knowing that there is going to be or had plans for software updates in the future for this product so that I know that it's not going to be outdated pretty quickly. Now let's move on to the things that I didn't enjoy about this product or didn't like about this product. First, it is around $560. That is a bit expensive for a lot of folks and I feel like people would enjoy some of the features that it comes with if it was a bit more affordable. And I get it, you know, companies have to make profit, there's manufacturing costs, there's shipping costs and all that. So I totally get it why the price might be higher to produce a quality product like this. But again, it would be really nice if it was more affordable. Removing that one computer connection was hard. You know, once I figured out the optimal position where I was like kind of laying flat, reclining the seat, it was pretty easy. The connector came out, but at first I was really struggling to, you know, get a hold of that connection. So if you have big hands, it might be difficult for you to remove that connector. Putting it back on was super easy, but removing the original connector, that was difficult. I also wish it let me change the autopilot setting that shows up when I turn on the autopilot in my car because it just shows the two orange cars and the following distance. I wish it showed more useful things like lane markings. Uh, that would be that would have been pretty awesome. I also wish it had navigation interface built into it so that I can see the navigation right in front of my eyes. Finally, I wish it had the sensor information embedded into the display. For example, when I am too close to a car or a obstacle when I'm pulling into my garage, I wish it showed the distance between my front bumper and the obstacle, like how Tesla shows. I wish it just mimicked that into the display. Again, some of these things might be, you know, a feature that they are gonna update in the future software updates. Overall, I really like this product and I would highly recommend this product for anyone who is interested on purchasing and installing this product. Being said that, is this product for everyone? Absolutely not. 
This product is mainly for folks who came from driving a traditional car, including you know Model S and Model X who had the speedometer and other instrument cluster right in front of their eyes. And they actually want that to happen in Model 3 because when you get into the Model 3, there is nothing in front of you that might freak some people out. And if they want to get used to the car, you know, they might want to have all of that information right in front of their eyes. So that is absolutely what this product solves that problem. It gives you an accessibility to see that information right in front of your eyes. This is also for folks like myself who are always looking to customize our cars and make our car better. And you know, I'm always looking to get more accessories, make my car different than everybody else's. As an engineer, I'm fascinated by new products and installing new products in my car. So this is absolutely right up my alley. I, I enjoyed installing this product. It was a fairly easy installation after I figured out that one stubborn connector that I had to take it out. So this is also for folks who want to customize their car. And you know, $560 might sound like a lot, but customizing car does cost a lot of money. So thanks for watching this video. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this product. Would you get this product? What fate of flaw do you see with this product? And if you are not gonna get this product or if you wouldn't want this product, let me know why this product is not right for you. I am very interested on in knowing your feedback as well as I can pass those feedback on to the manufacturers if you wish something was different about this display. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any of my future Tesla videos. I have some really cool accessories that are coming on the way and I will be doing videos on product reviews as well as I have many other videos including efficiency test using the aero wheels on and off and many other Tesla videos on the way. So make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful as well as subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of those future videos. I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much for your support to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Namaste.